to us all. I call Colin King. Thank, thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to speak on the third reading of the Student Loan Scheme Bill. Uh, when you listen to uh, the opposition speaking, it is very easy to look at, you, at the student loan situation in isolation. You'd imagine that it was uh, such an enormous part of uh, the overall context of things. But I just think it would be very appropriate during this third reading to give a wider context to the student loan uh, situation as it relates to uh, the exemptions and miscellaneous provisions is that uh, its nominal value is uh, $10.3 billion. Uh, its basic fair value of the loan scheme, is, according to the last financial report, is $6.5 billion. That really, we look at it from the point of view back in 1994, uh, before the, well, as when the, uh, the student loan scheme was put in place, there was only 252,000 people accessing tertiary education and the, and the bill and the and loans. Uh, today we are seeing that it is approaching half a million. So collectively, whilst um, we might have our varying views on it, we have gone in this country from being a country that had one of the very lowest uh, entries into tertiary study to being one of the very highest. And I think that that is a, a laudable and plaudible. So that's well done. This bill in its context uh, certainly recognises the fact that education is uh, portable, it is valuable, but it still, we don't want to forget, Mr Speaker, that the taxpayer still is picking up 70 per cent of the cost of education. Half a million people uh, with student loans, uh, the desire of the bill is to make sure that the student loan scheme uh, functions as it is intended to, and principally uh, it extends or it uh, refines the process of two particular groups. And those two particular groups, as has been articulated re uh, regularly in the House this afternoon, is those countries that uh, are involved in the realm of New Zealand, principally Niue and the Cook Islands and the Tokelau's and, and of course, uh, the other particular uh, areas, the uh, Ross Dependency. So really, the second part, which is, I think has is, is been an anomaly that uh, has uh, you know, been brought by the uh, Minister to the House here that needs speedy remedy, is those that have gone on to further uh, studies. They've gone on to uh, finish those studies in, in an in a, uh, institution uh, above level seven uh, at a course uh, that we do not actually have uh, available in New Zealand. So, Mr Speaker, without going on too much further, I think the matters have been uh, well and truly canvassed. This bill will greatly aid the running uh, off the student loan scheme, and I'm sure that the Minister will feel uh, more comfortable that it, that it is passed in a speedy and responsible way. Uh, so, from that point of view, it gives me great pleasure, Mr Speaker, to commend this bill to the House. I call Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <clears throat> the Student Loan Scheme Exemptions and Miscellaneous Provisions Amendment Bill amends the Student Loan Scheme Act of 1992 by extending interest-free loans to borrowers who are present in Nui, the Cook Islands Tukalo or the Ross Dependency for 183 or more consecutive days in order to encourage borrowers from those countries or from that territory to return to their country and contrib contribute to its development. And also students who are enrolled with a New Zealand education provider and engaged in a full-time study overseas under either a formal exchange program approved by the New Zealand Government or a formal agreement between a New Zealand tertiary provider and an overseas tertiary provider. The bill also makes eight minor or te 